enjoys comics, games, and entertainment. The Toy Time Machine Radio Show. We'll be joined by our voice actor, celebrity guest, and author of Willow's Run, Robert Boxdale. All right, guys, we're back here on the Toy Time Machine Live. We also have a special guest, Robert Boxdale. Robert is a celebrity actor and voice actor and author on this new project, this amazing book, Willow's Run. Hello, Robert. Lance, how the heck are you? Doing excellent. I feel like there's a little bit of deja vu here. I just saw you a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I know. And you were so gracious to give me a ride home. Oh, nice? yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I gave you bananas. Yeah, you gave me bananas. and they're Yeah, you know, actual bananas. Yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> yeah. You end up making a banana bread? They're in the freezer right now. They're, they're waiting to make some muffins this week. Um, so, Robert, um, back in the 90s, you start on uh, a series north of 60. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it was actually it was actually Canada's number one series for a number of years. We were doing numbers like nobody had ever seen before. And yeah, tell uh, me about it. it here it, it is, still playing, still on the air, twenty eight years later. Isn't that an amazing thing being part of a project like that? Yeah, uh, yeah, it really is. And, and and you know, there are there are people who are there's like several generations now of people who have, who are growing up, have grown up, or grown old watching this show it's really quite interesting yeah well i'm, I'm 40 so this show was on when i was 10 yeah maybe even younger so mm -hmm. it frequently played on my tv and yeah. uh, i can't i still to this day after 30 years how, how many years is 30 it's got to be 30 years right? well it is because i think it started airing in in 1992 so that makes it 30 yeah. years yeah yeah I still, to this day, can't get the jingle, the, the opening jingle out of my head. That, that, that song. It's yeah. good. That, that, you're in every episode, too, right? Well, not really, no. I, 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 kind, of, I kind of came in um, after two seasons. The, the, they got rid of the first RCMP officer and, and replaced him with me. As the series went on, um, they eventually uh, did really terrible things to my character. And... Uh, but they kept the show going for another couple of years after that. Sad. But it show was great. They, they did make a, a, a couple of uh, movies afterwards, and uh, they brought me back for the first movie, uh, which was awesome. It was really amazing. I never expected to go back there, and there I was. Going from doing stage to TV, movies, you also did animation, voice acting, and uh, you voiced... Robocop, that's pretty cool. It was a really uh, exciting moment in my life and in my career because I was a big fan of the film. When, when I uh, went to audition for the, for the series, the cartoon series, I didn't really expect to get it. I remember getting the phone call um, from my agent saying that I would landed the part, the actual lead part. Um, I was just over the moon. I, I mean, I remember that day as clearly as if it was yesterday. I don't know if you, uh, you know, meant to do an impression, but it's, you sounded just like Peter Weller, Robocop from the movie. Well, you know, part of that is casting too, right? Um, you, because I guess they were looking for not sound alikes, but something that would translate to animation that people would be kind of familiar with from the movie. Like, just like you said. Uh, I ended up working with him years later, and uh, on, on the uh, on the space it was a space Odyssey movie. Five. Yeah, Odyssey was, Five, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. a guest star on the show, and uh, I, awesome. it was so great to meet him and to tell him that I had I had played RoboCop. He he thought that was pretty cool. And you also did some voice acting for some of her favorite cartoons, like the Uncanny X Men, Kazar, Sauron. What's it like being on a show like that? Marvel. Uh, so after uh, Robocop, I was basically vetted uh, by Marvel because because Robocop was a Marvel production. Mm -hmm. So uh, they'd had to vet me to, to get on. I, lots of production companies do that. Like Disney does that. There's a very intense vetting process. They want to make sure that you're not some kind of kook. Yeah, they, so don't want you in, they don't want you in any kind of negative spotlight, right? No, that's right. Because they they you're they dealing with kids. It's kids TV. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. They it's don't want big, you to be the guy deal. who's running naked through the, you know, the Blue Jays game. I did go in and, and read for, uh, for Marvel, for Kazar, I think it was. And they, and they, they basically, you know, showed you this kind of rough sketch. Often they'll just go, okay, give us what you, you've got. And if you haven't got, you know, something that they like, they'll go, thanks, see you later. Um, and I had seen this other character, uh, there's, a, there's a piece of paper laying around with this long beaked kind of dinosaur looking thing. Sauron. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, I, so I, I gave them something for that as well. And uh, I think they really liked that. And then they went back and listened to my Kazar and they kind of went, just use your normal voice, but kind of in a heroic kind of way, you know, let's bring it down a little bit and be heroic. It's your planet. It's your, you know, you're the king of this jungle here. Um, And, uh, and, and, and I, and I got the part parts. Um, So going from voice acting stage cinema, you were in a movie with Mel Gibson called, Fat Man. It's a cool Christmas movie. Going from something like that to working on a really cool book called Willow's Run. Is this your first book? Yeah, it's my uh, it's my first book. Um, I've, I've been a writer for at least half of my life. I've I've been writing and and having published uh, short stories uh, and 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 microfiction and flash fiction and stuff in literary magazines all over North America. I created a television series and I was in development with Global for a number of years. Um, and I, I, I guest wrote and ghost wrote and stuff like that. So I've always been a writer um, and a reader. I've released it worldwide in all formats. So it's in soft cover, hard cover, uh, large print uh, hard cover, uh, audio book and ebook. I narrated the audiobook myself, um, and I had a guy uh, who just contacted me from Portugal recently, and he said, uh, I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and I listen to yours, and I'd like you to do me a favor. I'd like you to uh, narrate all audiobooks everywhere from now on. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've listened to any even, you know, nippets of a audiobook. Uh, pretty sure it's been a long time since i've even read a book but i did get to listen to the sample that's on it is amazon yeah yeah and uh man did it ever sound good thank you it well it it is really good you know it's one of those things too that because i was a voice actor all my life and because i wrote the book and because i've directed i i i I knew what to do it's amazing that's amazing now before we go uh can you give me just a quick little um tease of what the book's about how about this without giving uh, too much away you know yes okay well I, you know what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to give you the little the back blurb uh alcima the willow willoughby is on the run in a multi-million dollar rv stolen from her husband her very dangerous husband in withdrawal from pain medication and battling a crippling injury alcima almost makes it across the country Running on empty on the outskirts of a half-forgotten tourist town, she's forced to make a hard moral choice, one that turns her world upside down. As spring storms rage, Alcima becomes caught up in a labyrinth of old secrets. Hiding out in an eerie, unoccupied mansion, she makes a startling discovery that without her intervention may leave a killer on the loose. But her own past is catching up with her. Staying could cost her the freedom she risked everything to gain. The Willow's time is running out. So there you go. The front cover says Willow's run. Nothing stays hidden. Amazing. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you for being a guest. Always nice chatting. Absolutely my pleasure, Lance. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, good luck with the rest of the, the show and the series. I'll be listening. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you again soon. Take care. Joey's Comics, Games, and Entertainment. The Toy Time Machine Radio Show.